The following production is part of the Play Some Video Games Podcast Network. I say it's time we focus on what really matters. The games. Who's with me? Hello and welcome to episode 46 of the PlayStation Experience podcast The Janet Jackson to PSVG Prime's Justin Timberlake and PSVG's premier PlayStation podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Seth, and this week I am joined by Kevin, the PSVG Prime host and all-around pinch hitter, cleanup hitter, appears on every show. He's angry. You love him. How's it going, Kevin? It, it's Going well. I'm I'm perplexed by the dilemma you set up in this opening because I'm here on the PlayStation Experience, which would make me Janet Jackson, but I'm also on Prime, which would make me Justin Timberlake. So I guess in that case, I would be the best of both worlds, but then I'd be Hannah Montana. Yeah. Or and actually now now instead of violating somebody else, you're just disrobing yourself. Violating this myself. Is a, this is a Super Bowl throwback. Obviously, keeping it. <laughs> PG friendly uh, for our family listeners here. I want to take a minute to thank our PSVG patrons. You can find out more at patreon.com slash PSVG. These are our producers. Thank you to Coach Hulk, Edwin Callow, Barry Cathcart, Josh Borboni, Chris M, Devin Tyus, Paul Calicote, Kyle Hyman, and Benny Liu. And thank you to everybody who listens every week and supports us in any way that you support us. Um, this week, uh, as I was trying to think of what we were going to talk about, um, kind of realized that there's not a whole lot of news happening here a couple weeks after E3. So we're, we are going to take a minute and talk about the remaining PlayStation 4 exclusives that we know about that are going to carry us through to the launch of the PS5, assuming that comes next fall. Mm -hmm. Um, but before we get into that, uh, why don't we talk about what we've been playing? Kevin, I know that you have turned your back on PlayStation <laughs> and that you play most of your games on Xbox. But uh, what have you been playing either on your PlayStation or on your Xbox or Nintendo games that are also on PlayStation? What what have you been playing recently? Yeah, yeah I'll stick to I'll stick to actually ones that I have been playing on my PlayStation and I'll actually give some kudos here. And, and you're you're right in the sense that I definitely play Xbox more than PlayStation now. However, that's only because all the games I've purchased have simply been on Xbox. The exclusives I still play on PlayStation, right. and I absolutely love those experiences. I just have played them all at this point, although at least all the ones I'm interested in. So, um, But uh, Overcooked 2 uh, dropped back into that because the DLC started dropping for the season pass. Um, so the first one came out a little while ago. It was Campfire um, Cook-Off, uh, which adds some different dynamics to the already insane... Uh, atmosphere overcooked gives you uh you're able to cook s'mores they put a new game mechanic where um your partner and yourself have backpacks on and as you go through overcooked your basic job is to grab the different ingredients prepare them in the right way and serve the dish basically how it works mm -hmm. with the backpacks though the ingredients come from the backpack so if i'm making let's say s'mores uh the graham crack will be available i will have the marshmallows and my partner will have the chocolate bar so if I need a chocolate bar, I need to run and catch my partner and grab it out of their bag and go prepare it as they're in my bag going to get the marshmallows. So you not only have to run all over the stage, you have to run after each other to get the ingredients. So they they definitely have a knack for ramping up the difficulty in what is already a pretty difficult game mm -hmm. with all of the DLC. Um, so I played approximately about half of that with just my wife because there's less fighting and arguing that way. <laughs> um, but then the other mode came out this past week, um, Revenge... Night of the Hangry Horde, um, where okay. they basically add a horde mode to Overcooked, which is crazy, as, you, as you'd expect. But the premises in the Overcooked 2 story is that um, you have the unbred. So not the undead, but it's undead stale bread that come and haunt you like zombies. Okay. This horde mode introduces them in that aspect of being a, a traditional horde game. So you're in your kitchen, you're preparing the dishes, and the 
on bread come and they start banging on the windows, which are boarded up just like Call of Duty zombies. Uh, and you have to keep the, the them from breaking in and, and getting you by continuously serving them food to keep them at bay. Um, and you can also repair the boards if you want, but while you're doing that, you obviously can't cook. So it's kind of a balancing act of running back and forth uh, to keep those there, which I think is a great mechanic to add on because Overcooked, essentially, it's the same game. They just give you different dishes to make. The formula is the same. They just make it more complicated. This mode, by adding the horde mode, was an actual change to the mechanic of how the overall game works, which makes a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to, to playing more of that. We did play that with all four of us. Um, me and my wife and my two oldest all played it together, and it worked pretty well overall. Um, and they still have w- at least one more DLC coming out this year uh, that has been unannounced as well. So I've been enjoying the, the heck out of that. Love Overcooked, too. Cool. Um, and the other one is one of your, your show's favorites. Um, I can honestly say I have not played Fortnite in at least three weeks. Wow. And it's because I've been playing Apex all over again. Uh, I'm all in. I don't know what it is. I, I heard you and Justin talk about it before Justin went away. You don't know if it's that people are getting away from the game and the competition is getting easier or you're actually getting better. I'm having the same thing happen. I'm getting way more kills now. I'm winning uh, yeah. pretty frequently now. Um, and I will say to credit of PlayStation, I am better on PlayStation than I am on Xbox. Huh. And I don't know if it's due to the controller. I have no idea what it is. Uh, now, mind you, I'm playing with an Elite on Xbox, so it's not like I have just the base controller there. I have the better controller on Xbox, but yet something about the DualShock, I have more wins and I'm more successful playing on PlayStation than I am on Xbox. Um, I could still win on Xbox. I just have a harder time, it seems, overall. I don't know what it is, but I absolutely love it. So I, I still don't think I'm purchasing the next uh, season pass. Okay. Um, but I may be interested in the hero. I- I'm slowly unlocking heroes. I've gotten... Um, so on Xbox, I had Mirage because I got extra credits for being EA um, yeah, access. EA access uh, yeah. through Donnie. So I didn't even have it, but I got a bonus perk. So I was able to pick a character right off the bat. So I picked Mirage back then. Um, and I'm almost on the verge of unlocking another character through Xbox. Um, but on PlayStation, I unlocked Mirage so far. And I'm ranking up to, to unlock the next one. I think I might just wait and see the new hero and decide whether or not that one before getting Octane or, or Caustic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it, loving it. Cool. I, I actually I haven't touched Apex in the last week. Um, I really since uh, when I recorded last week with uh, with Mark, the guy mm-hmm. I usually play with, um, that was on Tuesday, and I didn't realize the season had already ended. Yeah. Um, not that uh, you know I'm not. I I ended on level 24. It's not like I was ever going to get up to level 100. Sure. Anyway. That, that's not a big deal. Um, at, at that point, but it kind of was like, well, the the next season drops next week. I might as well at this point. I'm just gonna kind of take a break and play some other things mm-hmm. while I wait for the next season. Um, I do think assuming when the season drops that it hits on all the points that they've said it will, you know, that, that leveling, leveling up will be a little more streamlined, it'll yeah. go a little bit quicker um, and so forth. I'm, I'm in, uh, you know, I, I, I'm definitely in on it. So um, as it is, I think I have $7 in apex coins, racked up so I, you know i really only need to buy right you're almost there i'm almost there and i'm almost able to unlock another character soon anyway which the only character i don't have right now is caustic mm-hmm. um but i i don't really want caustic i'm i'm really interested in watson um so so i haven't touched apex in the last week but look forward to getting into that more again next week um, I'm kind of at this point where i'm bouncing around between games sure right now i just there hasn't been I haven't bought a new game for a while, at least that I've stuck with. I think the last game I bought might have been Sekiro. And, Sekiro, and I think. I, yeah, I jumped. I jumped off that. But um, what did you? What did you trade? That, didn't you trade that in for something though? Yeah, I thought you bought something with the Sekiro. Oh, money. I might have bought uh, MLB The Show with it when I, I traded. You're right. With Sekiro and you were playing that. I bought yeah. MLB The Show, which I have been playing and, mm-hmm. and I really enjoy. I did um, since the last time I talked about it. I wrapped up the World Series. Um, with the Indians and kind of a lot of times how I am with sports games. Once you win the championship, it's like, all right. Right. Uh, so, so I'm still, it's still on my system. And, and now I'm to the point where if I just feel like popping in and, and playing a game pretty quickly, I will. Uh, the issue with that is that it's a pretty uh, skill dependent game. Um, kind of like apex. Like I, I, if I go a week without playing that. So when I go back next week, I'll probably run into some <laughs> issues. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm terrible for a little while, and the same thing with the show. I um, I got to the point with the Indians where I was winning every single game. You know, it drops in drops you in for the last two or three innings. Yeah, 
and then I was winning all of those games, and then I played up through, I won every playoff game, and then I was up 3-0 in the World Series, and then we went to Syracuse for like four days. Mm-hmm. I get back from Syracuse, and I lose the next three games. I had a lot. I probably had <laughs> won 20 games in a row. Right. Um, my, you know, the Indians, my Indians for this season were, had 120 wins, which if you know anything about baseball, that would smash the single season record. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, so I, I had a good, good season in, in fantasy digital baseball. And, uh, then I was on the verge of blowing it, get to, uh, game seven of the world series. I'm against the Dodgers, which obviously is a great team. And, um, and they have you play the entire game. I haven't played a full nine inning game of of this year's MLB the Show at all. So I'm playing the the entire game. I'm fast forwarding. I get into the ninth inning, down two runs, and uh, and I come back and tie it. Goes into extra innings, and I come back and win it with my. Um, it's this guy named Kevin Ploiecki. He's the he's a catcher. He's not. He's. I mean, obviously, he's a major league baseball player, but he's not right. like a great major league baseball player. Not a great hitter. He's not. Francisco Lindor or David Ortiz or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, but he was my hero of the, of the world series had my game tying hit and my game winning hit. And I avoided my worst collapse in my sports video game history. So, so that was fun, but now I'm kind of like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm good to put that to bed for a little bit. Right. Um, I have been playing uncharted four. Um, okay. You went back really, to really enjoying that. I'm now to the point, um, I, I just got to Madagascar, so it's mm-hmm. that little open world se- section, open world ish section yeah. where you're driving around in the in the uh, jeep. And I I'm at the beginning of that, and then I was just like, ah, I don't know if I feel like going through that right now. I I don't know. So then I've tried to play Borderlands two, um, and that. I think I've only gotten like a half hour into it. Like each time I play, something happens where <laughs> yeah, you know, the kid walks downstairs or. Uh, phone rings or so, something happens every, every time I try to play Borderlands 2. So I'm either the 30 minutes I played of it are awesome. I love the atmosphere. I like uh, shooting things and seeing numbers pop up like yep. Destiny. Um, I like it, but uh, I don't know. Now, Mark, Mark, your gaming partner there, that's the name Mark, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, does he have Borderlands 2 as well? He does. Um, okay. so we both have Plus, PlayStation Plus. Oh, that's so, right. Um, so there's a, a chance we might, I, I might try and talk him into hopping in and playing that. I would suggest it only because, so I revisited Borderlands 2 a couple months ago. Like I think right after they announced 3, I got excited. I was like, oh, let me go back. And I had the Handsome Jack collection already. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I sunk 20 hours or so into it. So I spent a substantial amount of time in it. But you get to a certain point where the game becomes increasingly hard to do things alone. Okay. So it's almost like it's the game designed for groups to play. Okay. Uh, or at least duos, I think, at, at the worst case scenario, which has me just a little concerned for Borderlands 3, knowing our reputation with our community that, like, hey, nobody's schedules ever sync up or rarely sync up to play something. So I, that's the only thing that worries me. But I, too, I love everything about Borderlands. It's just, it just it gets a little bit difficult if you're alone. So. Yeah. So, so I'll see. I, I might. Um, but the, the thing about that is Apex Season 2 drops next week. So, yep. <laughs> um, so probably that's probably why I'm in this little malaise right now. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of waiting for Apex Season Two to drop. Then the next real game that I'm anticipating is um, the Marvel game on uh, Switch. Yeah, Ultimate Alliance Three. Um, yeah, Ultimate Alliance Three. So you know, I'm just kind of in a in a in between time. I even uh, actually this past week um, got out my racing wheel again and and did nice. a little bit of Gran Turismo sport um speaking of games where skill is important um (laughs) i haven't played that game for a couple months and uh it was rough um but it's still it's still a great game they're still adding i i loaded it in and they've added a couple tracks in the last couple months they've added more cars you know it's a game that's going on two i think it came out in fall 2017 so it's going on two whole years yeah Um, it's incredible which which is pretty good so um, I did uh, just beat on Switch, but it's also on PlayStation. Swords of Ditto. Oh right, um, which is the uh, cartoony graphics. Uh, it's really charming, pretty funny. Um, it's a Zelda like you. You're this hero of legend 
that comes around every 100 years and you are um, tasked with defeating the evil Mormo, this wizard thing. And uh, um, and it's a top down. It's like Legend of Zelda, the uh, um, link to the past, link to the past. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of like that aesthetic. It doesn't look like Legend of Zelda. It's not as good as Zelda. Um, but it is, it's really good. It has some dungeons and, and things like that. And it is, Oh yeah. Okay. I'm looking at some pictures now. Okay. I, I, now I remember this game. Yeah, yeah. I actually was interested in this one too. It's good. Um, I picked it up on sale. I would suggest on sale. Mm-hmm. Um, also if you get too much closer to the Zelda game coming out in a, in a couple months, we'll just, um, wait. <laughs> just wait because yeah. this is the poor man's a poor man Zelda game. It's good, but it's it's not as good as Zelda. And but, the art uh, sti- the art style is is great. I like oh, the yeah. art style with this. It's very um if people are familiar listening to like Steven Universe on Cartoon Network, it looks like yep. that to me. Yeah. Yep, yep. So it's good. It's funny. The writing is funny. My biggest complaint is the load times. So you're on when you're in one section of the map and then you go to the next the next section, it takes I I don't know how long, three to five seconds to load. It's not in the grand scheme of things very long, but mm-hmm. when you're, it feels like a long time. And sure. every time you boot up the game, it takes, it takes a good two minutes to get in into gameplay. Oh. And between, between every screen or if you enter a building or enter a dungeon and between each room in the dungeon, there's a little bit of a loading screen that just, um, it just, I mean, that's the one thing that I didn't like about it. Um, but it was a fun game. I did. I got to the end. I beat it, and then basically it just fast forwards ahead a hundred years, and then now you're <laughs> the next sort of ditto, and you have to go defeat Mormo again. Um, so it's uh, uh-huh. and it's a little bit of a roguelite um, in that now the map is different. Okay. Um, and all of the, but it's also like a new game plus where all of the enemies are um, higher level. Right. And you you keep your materials and things like that. So how long how long did it take you to take you to beat? Um, maybe eight hours. Okay, so yeah, it's pretty short. Maybe. It's yeah, okay. it's not, it's not a long game. Yeah. Um, but there is a replay value where you play through with the first character the first time, and then there are other characters that you can play. Like the, I'm not sure how much more I'm going to play with it, but mm-hmm. the second character um, that I chose is a girl, and she has a bow. Where the first person was all melee up close combat, now I oh, have okay. a bow and arrow. Right, right. Um, for one of my special weapons. So, and, and there are secrets to find and things like that. So there, there's reasons to replay it. Um, I don't really think that I will. Mm-hmm. Um, that's enough of what we have been playing. Looking at the drop for what is coming out this week, uh, or what came out this week, we have car mechanic simulator yeah buddy you can, uh, you can overcharge people take way too long to do stuff <laughs> it's great there it was in vr yeah <laughs> uh there is a, a new racing game coming out this week f1 2019 which will confess has has i've gotten really close to being like oh that um yeah i like the f1 games they're great games every right. year this year they added in Um, So there's Formula 1, that's the top series. Then Formula 2, F2, is one of the the minor league series. Um, The next step down from, or I guess AAA, kind of, to to Formula 1's Major League Baseball. So they introduced that into career mode, and that's supposed to be pretty fun, and there's a little bit of a storyline there. But ultimately, it's the same game. You know, I I have one of them digitally, F1 2017, I think. Plus, I have Gran Turismo. So I... I think I'm going to hold off on it, but hmm. um, but it does look good. Um, other than that, there's uh, wasn't a whole lot else that I saw. I did see um, the Spider-Man Far From Home PSVR yes. experience. VR experience, which is free, which is yeah. free. So anybody has VR, just check it out. It's free. Do it. Up. Sure, sure. It's not anything you know, super superb, but oh, sure, free. Um, Samurai Showdown comes out this week. <laughs> yeah, I remember that game. <laughs> um, I think Josh was excited about this one, um, or at least maybe nostalgic about it. I, I, yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure Devin is pretty nostalgic for Samurai Showdown as well, because um, it's you know it's the same team that does King of Fighters, okay. um, which was back to you know great arcade. Um, I believe Neo Geo was the ones that had all these games on it before. Yep. Um, so it's like the next generation of that. I think it's 
I don't think it's going to be great, but I think nostalgia, as you stated, was very strong. But I will note it has 216 ratings currently in the PlayStation Store, and it has five stars. Hmm. That's don't, pretty darn good. You know, but I generally uh, don't trust the PlayStation Store ratings. Right. Um, although having 216 ratings, that's a, a that's like substantial. Yeah, if you have like 10, it's kind of like hit or miss. But yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, other racing games, like, you skipped all this. Uh, the Hot Wheels Monster Jam, Steel Titans. Um, it's not Hot Wheels. It's just well, Monster Jam. But Hot Wheels makes Monster Jam. They just they just can't use the name Hot Wheels. I think they do. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they have the little the, they make the little cars. Oh. Which which sub sub note, uh, we will be reviewing at some point for PSVG because I got a review code for that today. So. Monster Jam? Monster Jam Steel Titans. <laughs> well, why can't you get a review code for F1 2019? Because how we obtain those codes did not have that as an option for me to request. Well, you should request it. I, I can. It's not out yet, so it's still a possibility. It is, it, it's out. Call no, them. it comes out this 28th. Call the people. Call Lewis Hamilton. comes okay. out the 28th. Don't lie to people. Call Lewis Hamilton. Actually, it dropped on Tuesday, the Legend Edition with Ayrton Senna and... Uh, Ellen Prost. Well, uh, you're not getting the legendary edition. I'm not getting the legendary edition. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, costs too much. The other, uh, there's another game called The Sinking City that comes out today. Saw that. Uh, that looks intriguing. Looks, looks pretty cool. Um, inspired by H.P. Lovecraft, um, and uh, just has a cool aesthetic. It's an open world adventure and investigation game. And um, I don't know the, the the hard thing for a game, I don't know, a game like that or whatever, is that it's it's sixty dollars, right? And I, I think uh, one thing with the next generation of consoles, it'll be interesting to see game pricing. Like I can see game, you know, um, the uh, that game coming out next year, Cyberpunk. Yes, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. That game could retail for eighty bucks. I think so, and people would still buy it. No people problem, buy it. And then there needs to be more of the forty dollars games. Um, I agree. Yeah, you know, the, 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 there there's a lot of room to play there. We need um, we need to overall not to sidetrack, but we yeah. do need overall to have a rebalancing of pricing. Where you're right, those AAA experiences, I I would fully expect to see an increase. But also, I think some of not that I want to call this indie garbage per se, but like these independent games that don't really have a leg to stand on honestly don't have a right to sit there and be like you we should pay sixty dollars for this but like, okay what have you made what's this about what's the backing behind this like i've never heard of this game until it was on the drop so you know what do you really think you're gonna get out of it should this really be like a thirty dollar game kind of deal but right yeah like um oh the game with the girl who had the <laughs> had the mental issues and xbox bought the studio that game oh uh uh, Hell, sinuous sacrifice. Yeah, Hellblade, Hellblade. sinuous sacrifice. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, that game was thirty dollars at launch, I think, and that's yep. the and that fits that, to me. To me, that that was great. You could get forty or more for that one, but I mean, the length is short on that one too. But you're right. Like that's an experience. You're like, wow, this did not feel like an indie game at all. But there's indie games that very much feel like an indie game. Right. Um, I was trying to look up other things that Big Ben Interactive has developed or published. So Warhammer Chaos Bane just came out earlier this month. Okay, yep. Uh, my little riding champion. Um, there you go. I uh, I have looked at that game a lot because my kid, my girls are at the age where they like horses. Sure, and, that's why you're uh, looking. <laughs> and uh, so I'm like, I, I would love to get them a horse, some sort of horse game. That game looks awful. Yeah. Um, v Rally Four is a rally game, but. Uh, it it does not look good. Yeah. Um, oh, they published the Kylo Ton racing games. Okay, they're they're okay racing games. Um, I don't know. So it sounds like Big Ben is a pretty broad indie publisher. Yeah. So, all right. Um, there was one on there that I want to highlight a little bit okay. because it has me intrigued looking at the drop, and that's Paper Dolls it's towards the bottom of the drop. Okay. It is a first person horror game with uh, Asian influence culture uh, dealing with the person who goes into mental depression. Uh, his past memories come up and haunt him. Um, he loses consciousness, wakes up and, and just is being haunted, I guess, if you will. Um, clearly an indie game. It looks very much inspired to be like a, a PC 
type of experience, like a walking simulator, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but does appear to have some jump scares and stuff like that. But graphically, it looks pretty good. Yeah, uh, if you scroll to the screenshots for an indie game, and it's only sixteen ninety nine at full price, and it's fifteen twenty nine right now, ten percent off. Um, I don't know if it's any good. I don't know anything, but this price and what I see at least here in front of me has me mildly interested. So you know, you look at something like that where it's like, okay, this has my attention, versus um, the 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 last game you mentioned yeah. at sixty dollars. I'm a lot more likely to take a chance on this one I haven't heard of versus that one that I haven't heard of for sixty. So right. Yeah, that does have uh, have an interesting look to it. W <laughs> published by Winking Skywalker Entertainment. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it um so it has one rating at one star. Yes, I saw that. That uh, yeah, <laughs> which could mean that that could mean absolutely nothing, right? Um, uh, but that could also mean a lot. <laughs> yep. Uh, so. Cool. I'll see if I can get that review too. We'll see if we can get F1 in that one and we'll report back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, jumping jumping ahead, um, I was going to mention uh, um, Moss um, mm -hmm. PSVR gets a free update today. Uh, well, Tuesday as we're recording this, the day before we release this episode. There's a new chapter of Moss called The Twilight Garden and it looks cute. I don't mm -hmm. have PSVR, so I haven't played it. Kyle was very excited about it. So if you have PSVR, from what I understand, you should definitely play Moss if you haven't. Yes. And if you have Moss, now you have a reason to, reason to dive back in. It, it does look great, and it's one of those experiences where like, I haven't jumped into VR. And for me, it's more of a pricing thing because I don't think I'd play it enough to warrant that price, which is you know a, a substantial at this point you know, a substantial down payment on the next gen consoles. Like that would save the money right. there, but there's these couple experiences here and Moss being one of them that highlights it that for me, like, man, if I had this, this would be one of the first things I pick up and play. And it's good to see them, you know, Sony has been still very dedicated to the VR experiences yeah. and it's good to see them, the, the developers still investing in that product. Like Moss is out. They could have just left it. They didn't need to add anything else to it, but here they are doing it, which gives you more reason and more support for VR, which, Honestly, it needs right now. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's really been a good year for VR. Mm -hmm. I haven't I haven't looked at like the full game list recently or anything, but right. um, there are enough games on it now to where you could easily buy it and and have plenty to play. It's not a okay if you bought it at launch, you have the Batman VR experience yep. and like two other short things to play, and then you then it's a party novelty Yeah. Um, where now there are more games and there's just a lot more to choose from. Um, it's still for me, it, it it's cost. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I look at $250 and that's um, right now that's car payment. Yeah. <laughs> right. Absolutely. More than uh, more than uh, gaming thing. And, and that's, um, or that's $250. I and mean, that's probably my easily my gaming budget for the rest of the year, you know, Absolutely. If, if not more right. than that. So, um, anyway, Moss, jump on it, play it. Um, sounds like it should be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I did want to, oh, I didn't see, I did not see judgment in that list. Was it in the list? No, I, I didn't see it in the list. I thought it came out. Maybe it came out last week. Oh yeah. No, it did come out. It just isn't in the drop. <laughs> Maybe it was on last week's drop to promote it for this week. I don't know. I don't know. That's, it's really funny. Um, Judgment on PS4 uh, also came out this week. Um, it is definitely out, and the mm. release date is... Uh, well, that's tricky because it released last year. June 25th is the release date worldwide. To so, today. Today is we're recording. Yes. So, and it is a um, kind of an offshoot from the Yakuza games mm -hmm. where you are a detective. I think you're a detective that goes... Um, undercover mm -hmm. uh, to expose the under underground. Um, oh, you're investigating. Follows private detective Takayuki Yagami as he investigates a serial murder case. Um, and of course, this is the one where the actor yep. um, got arrested for cocaine and they removed it from the game and, mm -hmm. and so forth. But um, Judgment is a PlayStation exclusive game. Yep. 
Um, and is a game that I think as a, as an exclusive gets completely overlooked. Um, yes. I mean, I know it's not developed first party by PlayStation or anything like that, but it is, um, you know, it's a, a second party exclusive. I think all the Yakuza games are exclusive to PS4. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, uh, you could call Yakuza PlayStation's Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> Got to got to catch them all, and it sells millions and millions and millions of copies. That's what oh, you yeah, mean, right? Exactly. Yep, yeah. Yep. So, so with that coming out this week, and, and it being a light news week, mm-hmm. I wanted to take a look through the remainder of the known PlayStation Four exclusives that are coming that we know about that are coming between now and sometime in 2020. Um, you know, obviously, we heard. You were on uh, the Nintendo Shack last week talking mm-hmm. about Nintendo's E3 um, uh, Direct and kind of what's coming out in Nintendo Land. You and I are on a lot of the same page there. Mm-hmm. Where, um, and, and I mean, and that's why Nintendo's not my main console. It's because they don't have games that I'm interested in yep. in general. And uh, and even I mean, to be honest, the PlayStation exclusives aren't necessarily all games that I'm interested in. But sure. with, with PlayStation, I can also play F1 2019 and Star uh-huh. Wars and Outer Worlds and all these other games that I'm interested in that aren't coming to Nintendo. Uh-huh. But anyway, that, that doesn't matter. So Judgment is coming out this week, uh, PlayStation exclusive. There's a, a game called Concrete Genie um, that was revealed, might have been last E3 or might have even been the PSX it was PSX, and then they talked more about it at E3. Yeah, and then it's been silent. Yeah, um, which I'm a little, I guess, would have me a little bit worried. But it looks like a really interesting game. Um, and then uh, Dreams, which is in beta right now and doesn't have a specific release date, and they aren't really pushing it that much. No. I mean, I, w- I would think if I were Sony and I was behind this game in beta form, I would, uh, I don't know. Every so uh, every week or two, put out a these are the best dreams levels from the past two weeks or something. I don't know. So, Concrete Genie, just to follow up, okay. it's currently and, re- release date is fall 2019. Hmm. So, they're still, and this is on PlayStation's own website. So, it's not, you know, a, a website reporting it. So, I, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. I was showing it PSX 2017 first. Okay. Then it was shown again with more gameplay at E3 2018, which looked very polished when we saw that too. Um, but you're right. It's been radio silence since then, but yet it's saying it's coming in fall of 2019, uh, and it does have that VR uh, experience they were adding oh, on the VR yeah. game mode. I remember they, they they said it was being held back for that, yeah. but they didn't really say anything since then. Um, but yeah, there's two different VR experiences: a VR experience mode and a VR free paint mode, where you can kind of paint over the environment with whatever you want. Uh, that were being added to the game, which I think is is the cause of its main delay. Yeah, yeah, I, I forgot about that. Um, so that game, I mean, it, and that's a that's one of those games that should be a thirty dollar experience. Although maybe with VR stuff, maybe even forty dollars. Yeah. Um, it's developed by Pixel Opus, which mm-hmm. did the that was that twin stick um, game where you controlled the I forget oh I forget what that game was called, but it was like it was almost like a tech demo. Um, but uh, it was a good game. Uh, the gameplay was good, but it just it was like a te- tech demo. Yeah. Um, what entwined? Where you're the the two yes two colorful ball things that yeah. try to touch each other and and <laughs> well, that's that's really <laughs> friendly. What are you talking about? <laughs> um. The story is about two souls, a bird and a fish, that are in love but can't be together. Once united, the souls will transform into a magnificent soaring dragon. Um, It's you know one of the, it's one of those artsy indie games that PlayStation was really behind at the end of PS3 and beginning of PS4 generation. Yeah, like Flower and Journey. It's like those kind of yeah, yeah, abstract Um, game that has fallen by the wayside. So totally. um, So I'm I'm excited for. For Concrete Genie, I think uh, I think that it's a different. There are a lot of games on this list that are ultimately third-person action adventure games, and yeah. just set in some different settings. And Concrete Genie still might be it might be a third-person kind of action adventure kind of game, but but I think the 
the aesthetic and and the the focus of it is just a little more different than than you see in, in yeah. a lot of games. So, um, and I, I think if it is coming out in fall, I I would bet we get another state of play event. Sometime I, we here. we have to. I mean, it'd be weird for them to stealth release it without pushing it again at least one more time since E three of last year. You know. Yeah. So, uh, and, and we're due. We got a state of play. I think right at the end of May or f- yep. very first of June that re- revealed Death Stranding uh, release date and, and right. Talk about, um, and that was the a, a good little event. Mm-hmm. So we're probably. I mean, who knows? But we're probably due for another one, maybe here in July. Um, it's just it's just concerning because they actually have a semi crowded fall for exclusives. Mm-hmm. So I know we haven't gotten further else, but you mentioned Death Stranding. That's in fall. Medieval's out in fall. This is out in fall. Like that's that's a lot in for what's you know slated to be the kind of the end of this generation's life cycle. Yeah, and it's the and that's a busy time with a bunch of other stuff. Too. Absolutely. So, so it's one of those things where how many of these are going out to die? Mm-hmm. Um. All right, so Dreams is a game that I'm intrigued by. Right. Um, I think it it's a really cool idea, and I liked the demo when, when I got the the demo early access mm-hmm. thing. But I I haven't bought it yet, um, and I don't know. You know, when when you have a bunch of novice creators making who are very creative and do really cool things, but they're all using the same kind of image engine. Even different gameplay styles can look kind of samey. Sure, absolutely. Um, and, and that's that's what I was getting out of the the way early access stuff. But I'm expecting, you know, when once you're like a year out, then you know there really might be some some cool things in there. But um, it's just weird that hasn't gotten any promotion. Yeah, uh, it, and and for something that you know they said like, hey, this is going to be a thing that will live on, as you mentioned, mm-hmm. but you know, no mention of it, no push of it since the, the beta. And, you know, now once again, you're looking at PlayStation five, is this going to carry over directly to PlayStation five? And I'm kind of in the same wavelength as you here for the same reason. I'm not sold on dreams is the same reason I'm not sold on like Mario maker. I don't want to create stuff. Yep. I'll play stuff. Other people created. Sure. But is that enough to get me to pull the trigger on a full game where it's like, you don't necessarily know what, the content is going to be or how much of that content is going to exist that you're interested in. It's kind of like buying, you know, spending $60 to have access to this portal that, you know, put in the world of like movies. Okay. I'm going to buy this new movie subscription service, but they're not going to tell me what movies are on the platform before I buy it. Yep. You know, you you might have some wins, but overall you might not. And they're all going to be indie movies. (laughs) Right. Yeah. No star Wars. No, right. No big, big things. It's all indie movies, which are great. You know, there are, I'm sure, going to be really interesting things on there. It just sure, it's a tough um, sell. Yeah, it is. So I did. Um, I decided last time I searched for Dreams on the PS Store, I couldn't find it, but I did. I just searched for Dreams and found there is Dreams Creator Early Access is on there um, for thirty dollars. It was released April sixteenth. It has 928 ratings and five stars. Nice. Granted, I would think anybody who's buying that knows what they're getting into. Hopefully right. knows what they're getting into and is going to be predisposed to liking it. So, sure. Um, so dreams, a uh, full retail release could be out at some point. The other thing that could really get you, get me to jump in or, or some other people is there's supposedly a story mode that comes along with it of, of, their own created story. Um, that's good. Sure. So, I mean, I, I don't imagine that'll be a long experience, but if that's a, a 10 hour experience and then, Oh, you just played this 10 hour game. I mean, um, they're really good. Meaty molecule is obviously they're Absolutely. a good game creator, um, good developer. And so you get a 10 hour game and then you have access to all of these hundreds and thousands of other experiences. So, uh, I'm still I'm hopeful for that one, but like you said, as we get closer to the next generation, and some of these are supposed to be backwards compatible or whatever. Sure, that's, right. However, that looks. I don't know how how into a long term game I, I'm, I'm going to want to get into. Uh-huh. Um, the next game that has a specific date um, that is a an exclusive is Medieval, mm-hmm. October 25th. Um, which is my wedding anniversary. I do not think I will be playing Medieval that night. You could play it um, together. 
we could play it together. Yes, I'm sure that is what she would rather do than Olive Garden and a movie. I don't know. Um, Let's well, figure it out. This is year. This is year eleven. So last year was year ten. Year eleven is is low pressure. So this is the medieval year. That's, yeah, that's, the, medieval know, the paper year. year, the silver year. This is medieval year. Okay, we can we can do that. <laughs> um, did you play medieval? I did. I did, and I, I'm mildly interested in this only because it was a fun game, and and it looks like the the remaster, if you will, mm-hmm. looks pretty darn good. Like it doesn't look like it was you know halfway done or, or partially done like they, they took the time to, to do this now for me is this a 60 dollars purchase no but if this was like a 30 dollars or you know hits you know playstation plus eventually this is definitely something people should play it's a fun little game you know not anything you really need to sweat over or, or invest a ton of time into but it's a fun little romp for sure yeah um and it's coming out at a perfect time yes uh, october right before halloween mm-hmm. unlike uh certain um Halloween focused game on Nintendo. Well, we don't know. It could be coming out in October, but they're not, they're not committing Um, to that. (laughs) Medieval is $30. Oh, so that's, then I'm perfectly fine with that. That, I may actually purchase that then. That's good. I did. I I, I'll have to watch some more. Um, I did think the combat looked, I mean, I know that it's a PlayStation one game Mm -hmm. that's being redone and and it looked like old combat. I, yeah. I mean the the images the imagery is is upresed or built new or whatever but it looked looked a little old um, but maybe there's a difference between watching gameplay and playing a game absolutely um, so. and it is a little close to the next one we're going to talk about as far as time frame so like I would hold off on medieval for this next one at least for me yeah yeah the next one Death Stranding which is a game that. I've largely written off from from the moment it was announced. Just I don't tend to play uh, hyper violent, dark, gory, weird mm-hmm. games um, as much anymore. And and uh, this game with the whole baby in a backpack, womb, yep, weird goo, dark realm stuff. But uh, the last day to play reveal about this where they re- revealed the date the game looks awesome and mm-hmm. really intriguing um i don't know what the game play ultimately is right or, or anything but it's an intriguing game absolutely uh, and uh so i don't i don't know i don't i still don't know if i'm in on it or not uh um it, it's a tough sell i mean kojima i personally and i think even people who aren't interested in his games i don't think anybody can say kojima's made a bad game but his games are not for everybody. And I think that's that's where it's kind of divisive, where it's like anytime he talks about or releases something, that's going to get the media's attention, but it may not be for every single player. Right. For me, I'm all in. I'm interested. This looks great to me. And like you said, I still don't even know what it is, but I have the faith in Kojima that based on his track record with me, it would be something I would enjoy. So I'm taking that in without understanding everything that's going on for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah, and that's the uh, having a creator or studio like i mean naughty dog right you know naughty dog you're going to get a quality um quality game um that's interesting or if you know that you love bioware's games well maybe not anymore i would say yeah that's not (laughs) that's not a good example (laughs) anymore um so yeah so death training that that's one um Around that medieval time frame is when the Outer Worlds comes out. Yep. And I know on Xbox everyone's got it on Game Pass. Yep. yep. Um, which is which is great. Um, I'm I'm more interested in that game than I am in any other game on this list. Um, I mean, yeah, it, so it's I'm, definitely high up there for me too. Yeah. So I'm probably jumping in on that, and if I if I do that, I'll I'll wait for for sure. Death Strand, yeah. Which. Uh, which is fine. The uh, the ne- the other game coming out in November is Shenmue Three, um, which is a nice thing. So Medieval, Death Stranding, and Shenmue are all releasing within like four, three or four weeks of each other. Right. Um, but the nice thing about it is, I feel like they all have different audiences. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Medieval, you could that could be some overlap there, but um, but I feel like all three of those are different audiences and. The general Death Stranding enthusiast probably isn't going to be into Shenmue. Sure, I think that's fair. Did you ever play Shenmue? Uh, I did play Shenmue one a bit. Um, 
I have not jumped back into them. I can get one and two the remasters on Game Pass. Okay. Um, haven't done so yet because I want to see if it's. I have a gut feeling that for me, Shenmue is pure nostalgia, and I'm just happy to see this finally come out after all this time. But yeah. I'm not necessarily like, hey, I need to play this right away. Like I can totally wait for it. Doesn't really phase me. I would play it, but I, it's not going to move me to go and purchase it or anything like that. Yeah. Um. So that that does it for. 2019 um in 2020 we've got final fantasy 7 coming in march um which you and i talked about last week yep um was that just last week that might have been two weeks ago that's two weeks ago two weeks ago because you had mark last week yep. um and uh i'm i'm still really looking forward to it mm-hmm. um and i think it uh that is the game that e3 sold me on E3 sure. didn't sell me any other any other games, Avengers, but I was already gonna, probably going to get Avengers. Right. Um, Final Fantasy VII, that, that, that sold me on Final Fantasy VII. Um, sometime next year, presumably Last of Us Two. Yep. The rumors are February. Um, at least those are some rumors that might be some wishful thinking, but right. there was that video with uh, the actress who started to flub and say February. Right. Um, so, where are you in your pantheon of gaming? Where does The Last of Us fit? High your- up, th- very, very high up there. And it's funny because we're talking about it in the Discord, uh, in the Patreon room, because uh, yep. Paul Calico brought it up. He said, "You know, hey, I don't really have this attachment that everybody else does." And for me, it was definitely one of the greatest games I've ever played. Period. Between the story, I like the gameplay. I like what it did as a game. Um, But I mean, like that narrative right from the start was completely gut wrenching and I hadn't ever had that experience from a game yet in my life. And I've been gaming a long time. (laughs) So that kind of did all these things that I'd never experienced before. So it definitely was memorable. But that being said, I have never revisited this game. So much like you, I mean, you go back and you revisit the Uncharted every once in a while and you, you still enjoy enough fun doing that. I haven't done that with Last of Us and I'm seriously considering doing it over the summer just to see if I still feel the same way after playing it, or it was simply a in the moment thing uh, for Pantheon. But as, as it stands right now, it's definitely in my top five games of all time easily, maybe mm-hmm. even top three. Um, so last of us two, I'm all for most likely a day one purchase, as long as there's not a ton of other things happening at the same time for me. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm extremely excited. I want to see more. I want to know more. I want to know when. Yeah. Um, I, so last last of us I played one time enjoyed it a lot um, for for the story and and the gameplay and I think it's we're playing through uncharted 4 again now I recognize that the moment to moment gunplay and jumping around or whatever probably doesn't stack up with with other great games sure. it, with moment to moment gameplay apex legends is better than uncharted 4 and okay. I am sure better than Last of Us Two. I, I right the moment to moment I see an enemy, I'm going to go shoot that enemy and and fight that enemy. But Apex Legends, there are probably hundreds of games. Maybe I don't know. There are a lot of games better than than the Naughty Dog games. Mm-hmm. Um, Last of Us was about setting and pacing and storytelling, acting, even the cinematography of it. Like yeah. just the way things were, I hate to say shot, but you know what I mean when I say that, like yeah, the yeah. way that the perspective that they put you in, like moments like that, the, the scene with the giraffes, like stuff like that, just the way they, they, the imagery behind it. Yep. Um, and I still, and, and I mentioned in that conversation on, on our discord that even though I only played it once, it has some of my most memorable moments in gaming. There was the, that intro, uh, and, and we might have we're going to have some spoilers for the original Last of Us here. Uh, spoiler for the first twenty minutes: the intro, Joel's daughter dies during as they're fighting, um, trying to get away from the initial zombie attack or mm-hmm. freaker attack or whatever they're I forget what they're called <laughs> in the Last of Us. Not freakers. Oh my god! Um, yeah, I can't remember anymore either. Clickers, clickers, clickers. That's right. Um, so the the daughter dies, and actually she's not even killed by a clicker. I think she's shot. She shot by um one of the people trying to shoot the, the border guards because yeah, they yeah. think she's infected. Yeah. So I, I played that when my middle daughter was four months old mm. 
And I only have girls. I have three girls just like you. Me too. Yeah. And just, I mean, if that doesn't, I mean, that's going to affect you as a parent. Absolutely. So, you know, I mean, that, that is a visceral memory. The, the memory of the, there's this scene where you have to start this generator to get power on in this old hotel or something. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you start the generator and then you turn around and there's a giant clicker right behind you. It's like, oh, that's one of the, probably one of the biggest jump scare moments yeah. in any game that I've, that I've had. And then, then you have the ending of the game where, where, you know, Joel is rescuing Ellie and, and you, everything you go through at the end of the game. And then the, the very last interaction between the two of them is just, yeah. It, I've, again, I've only done it once and, yep. and it's, it's burned in my brain. It's a great game. I mean, it's mm-hmm. a great story. That's, that's the, the mark of, of something great, but it's not something I've ever felt compelled to go back and experience again. Right. Like I almost don't want to, because I'm afraid it won't be as good. Like I have these memories and I'm like, this is fantastic. What if I go back and it's not fantastic again? I, that's right. what I've, I think that's what I'm afraid of. Right. And, um, and so, so last of us two, I, I fully expect to be great, but I've also, my gaming has changed a lot in the, six years since I placed played last of us, my, you know, just like I do still play some mature games mm-hmm. and, and things where you do do bad things or bad things happen to your characters and, and so forth. But I tend to play less of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Sure. Want to be involved in that, in that kind of stuff less. Um, and, and part of that is just stuff that's goes on in the real world, stuff that I deal with. And yeah. It, and I, you know, mentioned it a little bit in our discord, just, some stuff that's happened in my community. And I'm just like, I, you know, I don't know th- that I want to go from having to communicate in my real life about tragedies to going and playing a zombie game where uh, all of my family is dying. And, and what, you know, obviously I don't know what's happening in last of us too, but I just, right. I'm like, you know, maybe I'd rather play. I have no clue what happens with final fantasy seven, but that's in a fantastical world with non-realistic, non-realistic. Right stuff going on maybe i want to spend my time there sure instead of zombie infested but you know nothing against i'm sure it's gonna be great i'm happy you know i'm looking forward to it coming out and to everybody being excited for it it just it's the same thing with people's movie taste though you're right like you you sit there you have to be in the mood for a certain thing and if you're just not like devin has zero interest in horror movies but that doesn't stop donnie from watching virtually every single one so it's yeah it's all personal preference oh yeah um one uh one game uh, that I that I left off our little list here that may or may not be coming out this year is called Babylon's Fall. Um, it's from Square Enix, and it debuted at Square Enix's E3 showcase in 2018. Um, this uh, it's a new it's from Platinum Games, um, and it um, of course watch it be uh, canceled or something, but. I remember when it was revealed last year, looking really interesting. Um, it uh, uh, where a new game from Platinum Games and Square Enix. Uh, it begins in a location called the uh, let's see, a fantasy setting with some significant history in its backstory. Um, begins in a location called the Helos Empire in CE, the year five thousand, with an event known as the Discovery of the Oversoul. This sits this sets into motion a chain of events um, that get apocalyptic, leading to the soul riots, then leading to a world war. And there's really not much known about it. I don't know that there's been anything else. There was just a, it was a CG trailer. Yeah. Um, it was a teaser. Yeah. Teasing it. Um, it looks like the game producer, who also is best known for his work on Nier Automata and Dragon Quest series, said back at the end of 2018 that he hopes to be able to share an update on Babylon's Fall within 2019, but he also added that he has multiple unannounced games in the works, so he'll be working hard on multiple things all at once. Mm. So there's nothing confirming that it was going to be released or, or more stuff was going to be given in 2019, but he just said he was hopes to share an update within 2019, so I don't think it would be coming out this year. Okay, yeah, it doesn't sound like that. But it is a console exclusive to PS4, mm-hmm. at least that's how it was announced. Uh, um, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, the also next year uh, we've got MLB the Show 2020. Right. I assume that's not been announced yet, but it's pretty sense. safe assumption. You and then it, yeah. Ghost of Tsushima from yep. Sucker Punch, which is the that that might end up being the swan song of the PS4. Yeah, very um, likely. 
So I am, uh, I like Sucker Punch. I, um, I loved, uh, the, the PS4 one. <laughs> Infamous? <laughs> Infamous Second Son. Yeah. Um, that is the, the first game that I ever platinumed that wasn't like a Telltale Walking Dead. And, right. Sure. You know, I, I, I really enjoy that game. I like their gameplay. I'm really hoping that Ghost of Tsushima is, more like that and not hard like Sekiro. And I like Sekiro. Sure, it was right. a great game, but um, if Ghost of Tsushima is you know story focused and looks great and 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 whatnot, it's uh, I mean it should be high up high up on any PlayStation owners list. Yeah, so. it's it's still on my radar. I wasn't as as high on this game I think as a lot of you folks were when this was first announced and shown last year, um, but. I do like sucker punch and what they do. So I'm trying to have a little faith that I just maybe need to see some more and, and get a better understanding of what it is. But you're right. I'd rather have something along the infamous type of experience versus a Sekiro or, you know, dark souls, but with a yeah. ninja type experience for sure. Yeah. So that is uh, kind of the roundup of PlayStation exclusive or at least console exclusive games uh, coming out, hopefully over these next 18 months. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I if I count, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten games plus eleven if you count that uh, last Square Enix game, Babylon's Fall, that may or may not exist. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much <laughs> uh, anymore. And counting Judgment, which just came out this week. So, sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, that overall is pretty a pretty good exclusive lineup. I, I will say it's better than what Microsoft has announced for exclusive to just their console before it ends. So you can say what you want about Sony saying, Hey, we don't have anything to show. That's why we're not at E3, but yet their exclusive lineup seems to be more impressive than its competitor who was at E3 and was talking yeah. about things. So I, w- you know, I, and I don't want to, and I haven't talked about it in discord just because it, it really doesn't matter, but I go into each Microsoft E3 hoping to be sold. On it. Sure. Not that I'm yeah. in the market. I'm not, I'm not going to get an Xbox One. Um, Especially not at this point. Yeah. Yeah, at this point. But, you know, in, in, in a couple years when I'm making that decision on the next thing, uh-huh. um, you know, I, I'd be happy to be sold on Xbox. But Microsoft did nothing to sell right. me. Um, the, the, the thing that the most people were excited about from that show was the Lego Forza. Which yeah, yeah. <laughs> doesn't doesn't grab me at all, and definitely won't grab me in two years as I'm making a decision on sure. on whatever. So, um, you know, and that's you know whatever. Just um, not that I was disappointed by Microsoft show. I don't really care, but right. they didn't do anything to sell me on it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and then yeah, so so that's it. So so ten console exclusive games that we know about coming out over the next year, year and a half. Um, Plus, I mean, this fall is just packed. Um, So it's good to hear. You need to request more free games for me to play. I I will. I will work on that. (laughs) I will stop requesting Xbox ones. Okay. Thank you. (laughs) And with that, I'm going to, we're going to sign off. We're going to call an end to this show. So thank you, Kevin, for joining me. My pleasure evening and uh, you can find us at psvg.blog you can find us on our discord you can always find a conversation on discord somehow if you want to spark conversation just mention at caro and say keanu reeves is terrible (laughs) and that will spark spark a great conversation um anyway visit us on discord for um all sorts of topics and uh, you can find us on twitter at psvg and at PSXP and our 15 other shows, <laughs> uh, Twitter handles. You can find us on patreon.com slash PSVG with some really uh, starting to um, pump out some patron exclusive content between uh, Academia, Arcadia Academia and Kevin Hates Everything. And DLC. And DLC. Um, so a lot of good, a lot of good stuff over there, all for just $1 a month. Mm-hmm. Um, So check all that out. And with that, I'm going to sign out. Everyone have a great week.
And though we may pledge fanboy allegiances to different flags, deep down inside we all serve one master, one king. And his name is Gaming. Forever may he reign!